video is going to cover significant figures. What are significant figures anyway? Well, when you measure matter, you use things like, let's say, if you are using a thermometer, you're going to use it to measure temperature. You use a ruler to measure length. You use a balance to measure mass. And each one of these instruments has a, a set precision. And you can read uh, you can read off these measurements up to a certain decimal place. Significant figures takes into the account all of the digits in a measurement that can be read from your instrument plus one extra digit of uncertainty. So let's say you were to put uh, you were to put a dollar bill on a balance. A dollar bill is about a gram. Depending on what balance you put it on, one balance may read 1.0, one balance may read 0 .0, 0 0.97, another balance might read 0 0.965. All of those have a different set of precision. Each one, if you rounded it up, would be one gram. So significant figures takes into the account how many decimal places can your instrument read to? And you always take one extra digit. So what are the rules in identifying the number of significant figures in a measurement? All right, let's take a look at the first rule. All non-zero digits are significant. So that means one through nine. All of those digits, one through nine, are significant. In this example, we've got 2,423. Each one of those digits are significant, and that means that each one of them can be read directly off of a, off of a measuring tool. If I have non-zero digits that surround a zero, that zero is also significant. So if I have 2403, well, I have four sig figs, and this zero, because it's sandwiched in between non-zero digits, is significant. So here's the idea. Zeros are just placeholders. They just hold a place. They have no value. So because zeros have no value, they are not significant to your measurement. Make any sense? So if you have a zero that is in between non-zero digits, it's a placeholder, but because it's sandwiched in between real numbers, it becomes significant. All right, trailing zeros in a measurement that does have, that has a decimal point, point are significant. So if I've got 2.400, this means that my instrument can read all the way out to the third decimal place. It's just that this is an exact value. And there are no, and those zeros on the end are just holding the place to let me know that my instrument is pretty darn precise. Right? So all digits in the coefficient of a scientific notation number are significant. So let's say we have the same value here, 2.400. And now I have it in scientific notation times 10 to the 3. All four of these digits are significant. Because if it's in front of a coin, if it's in front of a power of 10, that means that all of those digits can be read off of your instrument. All right, trailing zeros. So what do trailing zeros mean? Trailing zeros are the zeros that are on the right side of a number. Trailing zeros in a measurement that does not have a decimal point are not significant. Notice this number here. 2,423,000. These zeros here are just holding a place. They have no value. They're insignificant. So this number here has four sig figs. Notice that in this chart, all of these examples have four sig figs, but in a different way. The very bottom uh, rule is that leading zeros in a measurement that has a decimal place 
are not significant. Remember, these are holding spaces. If I have a really tiny number, these zeros are just holding the space for me. And they're just leading off the number, and those zeros are not significant. So this number also has four sig figs. Okay, so trailing zeros are the zeros at the left side of a number, I'm sorry, on the right side of a number, and leading zeros are on the left side. Let's do some practice. So before we practice, there are two additional rules that we have to take a look at. And we'll go through these problems individually. So whenever we're, let's say we take two measurements, we, we're going to calculate the density of a material. We have its mass and we have its volume. The mass has three significant figures, the volume has two. When we do our calculations, the calculation cannot be more precise or more accurate than the measurements that were used to get the calculation. So whenever you do multiplication and division, your final answer has the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest sig figs that you began with. Now it sounds like it doesn't make sense now, but it will when we look at problems. When you're doing addition and subtraction, the final answer has the same number or digits or decimal places as the number with the fewest digits. And we'll see what that means in a moment as well. All right, so let's count the number of sig figs in each of these measurements. Let's start here with 2,804. Well, remember the rule, all non-zero digits are significant, and zeros that are sandwiched in between non-zero numbers are significant. So we've got four sig figs here. All right, we've got 70 millimeters. Well, if the number does not have a decimal place in it, all trailing zeros are non-significant. So this is one sig fig. Our next number is 745,000. Remember those trailing zeros again? If there's no decimal place, they're not significant. So we have three sig figs. Four grams, 4.0 grams. Well, this is a trailing zero. But because this number has a decimal place, it is also significant. So we've got two sig figs. 750 milliliters. Once again, we have one of those trailing zeros, but there is no decimal place. So because there's no decimal place, that last zero is not significant, and we have two sig figs. Oh, this is a tricky one. 10 point. Centimeters. Well, that decimal allows us to know that this zero is significant. It's a placeholder, but my instrument can read to that one's place, and it's significant. So this number also has two sig figs. Our last number, well, not our last number, but the next number, 2.8400 kilometers, we've got those trailing zeros again, but What's the qualifier? Our decimal place. If I have a decimal, all trailing zeros are, are significant. So we have one, two, three, four, five sig figs. And the very last question, we've got three leading zeros and then a, a zero that's in between non-zero digits. So how many sig figs do we have? Well, trailing zeros are always not significant. This zero is sandwiched in between um, actual significant digits. So we have four sig figs here. All right, last we'll do some calculations. Notice first we start off with some addition and subtraction. When you put all of these digits in the first problem into your calculator, the number that you get is 26.281.
Remember the rule that we had for addition and subtraction? Your answer can only have, um, can have as many digits as the, the value that has the least number of digits. What do I mean by that? Okay. So here we've got three decimal places in our first, in our first um, measurement. We've got one decimal place in our second measurement, two decimal places in our third measurement, and one decimal place in our fourth measurement. Well, the least number of decimal places is in this measurement, 7.4 and 12.0. So that means that our answer must have the least number of decimal places, so the least number of digits. So that means this answer is going to be 26.3. Notice we've got around that two up to a three. And what happens to the other digits? They just drop off, and they're no longer there. So we have 26.3 centimeters. Let's take a look at the second problem. When you put all of these digits into your calculator, you end up with an answer of 4.4164 centimeters. Well, if we look back at our original numbers, our first value has four decimal places. Our second value has one decimal place. So our answer must have how many decimal places? Just one. So we'll round this off to the first decimal place. So here, for addition and subtraction, you're going to round it off to the least number of decimal places or digits. Because if we were in the, in the ones place, you couldn't go past the ones place. All right. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at multiplication and division. So here we're going to say we have the least number of sig figs in our answer. All right. So for our first problem, we've got three sig figs in our first measurement, and we've got two sig figs in our second measurement. When we put all of this in the calculator, we get 3.013, and this is centimeters squared because we multiply centimeters squared because we multiply centimeters by itself. But how many sig figs do we have? Well, this number has two sig figs. This number has three sig figs. Our value can only have the least number of significant figures. So that means we need to have two sig figs, and our answer is 3.0 centimeters squared. All right, the last problem. For our first value, we've got five sig figs. In our last value, we've got seven sig figs. When we put everything into the calculator, you get this number, 3.077075. And actually, we don't have any units here because our grams cancel. <laughs> um, which number has the least number of significant figures? Well, the first value, it's five. So our answer must have five sig figs. So it's going to be 3.077, oh, oh, can't be O, oh. we have to round up that last zero to a one because this seven here is greater than five, so we have to round up our last digit to a one.